right now, planet Earth is a giant undulating mass of trash and chaos and we all want out. I get it. And then Groupon comes along in their proverbial trench coat saying, Hey, hey kid, I got a, uh, I got a deal for 65% off some land up on the old uh, red planet up there. If, uh, if you're interested, limited time deal. And it sounds like a good idea. Why not invest in some property on Mars to pass down to your progeny? You know, just in case they survive the impending plague and lizard wars. It's only $12 for a $35 value of land, or you could spend $500 and get 20 acres of sweet Martian soil from the Lunar Embassy. Except that there is no internationally recognized organization with the legal capacity to legitimately sell land on Mars. Sorry. Let's say that mm, Swedish astronauts happen to make it up to Mars first, and they set up a colony and they start building their first Martian Ikea. But they happen to land on an acre of Mars that this certificate that you got off the internet says that you own. When you roll up to the Swedish embassy down in DC to lodge your complaint, do you think that they're actually going to take you seriously and relocate their Swedish Martian Ikea? No, no they are not. These claims all kind of bank on the idea that nobody owns Mars. And if nobody owns it, anybody can claim it. Manifest destiny in space. But if nobody owns it, then you don't own it, and then it's not yours to sell it, and you're just selling meaningless certificates for large chunks of money. These people are presumably making bank on this. BuyMars.com claims that 300 million acres of Mars land have already been sold, which one, I don't entirely believe, and two, if we ignore the Groupon deal pricing and we go with the website pricing of $29.99 per acre at 300 million acres, that is 8 billion 997 million dollars of Mars soil that has presumably been sold. That money has supposedly already changed hands. Hmm. I refuse to believe that these people are potentially billionaires. I mean, look at their website design. And if you had that much money, then chances are you would have been able to fund some sort of rocket to like go up there and personally inspect your land. So I don't think that they are rolling in that much cash. Although there are several companies that claim to be selling land on Mars, so maybe that 300 million acres of land sold is divided between those several companies. But if you take $8 billion and divide it by, say, eight, that is still a billion dollars, which is still a nice chunk of cash. It's just like how naming stars is a scam. That's right, that is also a scam. If you did not know, you cannot purchase the scientifically recognized name for a star. You are never going to see a news report that says, this just in, we've received word that NASA has discovered an Earth-like planet capable of sustaining life. It is located in the, uh, Deborah Loves Jason solar system. My favorite part about the Buying Land on Mars scam websites is that they try to insist that the other websites are the scams, that they are the only legitimate website that can sell you land on Mars, and if you buy from anybody else, you're just getting a worthless piece of paper. <laughs> These sites also boast how so many celebrities and two former U.S. presidents have purchased land on Mars. And I would be willing to bet three whole acres that it was just purchased as a joke. 
because a certificate for land on Mars makes a funny gag gift, and if you have the money to burn, then why not? The Lunar Embassy claims that the 1967 United Nations Outer Space Treaty states that no government can claim ownership of any celestial property, but that there is a loophole in the treaty in that it does not specify anything related to private corporations or individual citizens. So in 1980, a man named Dennis Hope filed what he feels was all of the appropriate paperwork to claim ownership of the moon and pretty much every other planet in the solar system. He went and you know, notified the United Nations that he was now the owner of these territories of the moon and Mars and Mercury and Venus and Neptune and etc. And presumably no one contacted him to contest it, so it must be true. But here's the thing. I see celestial real estate ownership as sort of a calling shotgun type of thing. You need to be physically on your way to the car. The car needs to be in sight before you can call shotgun. Like you need to be physically present at that car within the near future before you can call shotgun and have that be honored. You can't be in the restaurant ordering your appetizers and saying, by the way, I call shotgun for the ride home and for infinity. It just doesn't work like that. What I'm trying to say is that whatever private corporation with billions of dollars to spare physically makes it up to Mars first and sets up a perimeter and establishes some sort of base is going to be the one that owns that property. And they may have to do some sort of legal hullabaloo with various world governments in order to fully stake that claim. But theoretically, if they had enough money to get up there, they have enough money to like grease some palms and make it happen. So they are not going to be honoring the $12 certificate that you purchased from buymars.com with a Groupon. It is just not happening. Whoever gets there first is going to be the one that owns it. This is the modern version of, hey, I've got a bridge I'd like to sell you. And also, if you look it up, there are a bunch of people who have claimed ownership to the moon prior to 1980. Sorry, Dennis. Really, I can't even be mad. Like, I'm more just trying to figure out what kind of fake things I can sell people to make a lot of money? Like, ghosts? Would you pay $30 for a ghost? Like, if I took a bunch of old porcelain knickknacks and said that they were haunted and sold them for like $30, would people buy that? Is that a thing? Would that work? Could I do that? This Goldie the Fish retired Thai beanie baby is haunted by the ghost of an old colonial woman. If you have a butter churner in the corner of your living room, watch out because it may just start churning itself. This gremlin was found in the forests of Kuwait and shipped to America under the pretense of being a cat. If you get water on it, it freaks out. However, this gremlin can also grant wishes. So send me $29.99 and I will whisper your wish into the gremlin's ear. If the gremlin does not grant your wish, it's probably because the gremlin is from Kuwait and does not have a complete understanding of the English language.